Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Sanction Engineering. We're doing the fluids playlist, and we're continuing with hydrostatics. So in the last time, in the last video, we derived the hydrostatic equation. So this equation relates the differential pressure with respect to z or height, and it's equal to the negative times the density of the fluid times the gravitational constant. Okay. If you haven't checked out the video, I recommend you to do so. Before we do an example, I want to tell y'all one little thing about how to use this equation. Okay. So I'm going to start by drawing a fluid system. Uh, we just think where the top is filled with water and goes all the way down. So there's going to be water at the top. Okay, so that's going to be my, be my water. So I guess it would be something, something like this, right? Lord. Maybe I should take a drawing class or something. <laughs> okay, so let's say that it has a radius r and it has a depth of h, okay? So we can use this differential equation, okay? If you haven't taken differential equations, this is gonna be an example of how to integrate using some boundary conditions. So what we have to do is select two points. I'm gonna say that, well, we can say that this is gonna be, gonna be p1 and z1. This is gonna be p2 and z2. Okay, it's a two. Okay, so let's set z1 equal to zero. Okay, now the goal is to solve for p1 using this equation. Okay, so if you've taken differential equations, I recommend you pause the video at this point and try it by yourself. All right, so the way we use this is we have to write some boundary conditions. And so the first thing we want to do is separate this by multiplying the differential to the other side. So it's going to be dp is equal to negative rho g dz. Okay, great. And uh, I think you know where this is going. We're going to have to integrate. We're going to have to integrate from p1 to p2 and this bad boy from z1 to z2. Okay, so because P1 is corresponding to Z1 and P2 is corresponding to Z2. Again, it doesn't matter which one you choose as one and two. I'm just gonna clarify this. This is point one and this is point two. But, but what does matter is the fact that these points have to be consistent with each other. So that's why P1 corresponds to Z1 and P2 corresponds to Z2. Now, when you integrate DP, Remember, a little side note here, if you have integral of dx, the invisible one right there, and it's going to be delta x, okay, using the boundaries. So the integral of dp is going to be, well, it's going to be p2 minus p1, okay? And what about this guy? Now, at constant density, at constant density, constant density, And constant gravitational constant well it's a constant we can pull it out of the integral so it's gonna be negative rho G and very similarly we have a similar uh, boundary for for DZ and it's going to be Delta Z or plugging in the balance is gonna be Z2 minus Z1 okay that looks pretty good that looks pretty nifty now just uh, rearranging some terms we can solve for we can solve for p1, right? So I'm just gonna kind of do this in my head here. I'll just move p1 over to the other side. P1 is gonna be equal to p2 plus rho g z2 minus z1. Looks pretty good to me. We can box that. Okay. So what this is saying. Using the hydrostatic equation, for a fluid system at equilibrium, if we know the height and the corresponding pressures, we can solve for P1 as a function of the height. And really, if we let Z2 minus Z1 equal to H, another way we can write this is going to be P1 is equal to P2 plus rho GH. Okay, does that look familiar? as well as the fact that if we notice that P2 and P1, P1 is at the bottom of the tank, but P2 is at the top, 
Namely, P2 is actually the atmosphere pressure, P atm, which is going to be assumed to be 1 atm. Okay, so we can plug that in here. And this pressure is a function of the height, a function of the depth. So namely, we can write P1, P1 as a function of the depth of the, of the fluid, or H, is going to be the P atm plus the density of the fluid, rho g h. So it's pretty cool, right? Because now we have P1 as a function of height. So now we have a function, and it's equal to the atmosphere pressure. So it's a constant. Rho, assumed to be constant. Gravity, gravitational constant, 9.8 meters per second squared. And h. So now if we have any h value, that's why it doesn't have to be at the bottom. It could be here. It could be here or here. Now we have a function. For this type of uh, for this type of system, and let's check. A, let's take a look at the units before we do an example. So, atmosphere, right? So this is going to be one atm. So recall that if pressure equals force over area, then the units. That's why the dimensional analysis video is important. Is going to be newtons per meter squared, which by the way is going to be what kilograms per kilograms times meters per second squared times meters squared, one of the meters cancels out, so we need kilograms per meters times second squared. Okay, so that's gonna be the units for your uh, pressure, as well as the fact that we have to know that, uh, well, we can box this, and we have to know that one ATM, one atmosphere, is defined to be 101.325 Newton per meter squared, or one Pascal. So this will be our conversion factor. And so notice how these are SI units. So your goal is to use this equation only in SI units or only American units. Me personally, I prefer only as, uh, SI. So, well, we can know this is gonna be in ATM or really, try not to use ATM, it's gonna be moon per meter squared, moon per meter squared, Atmospheric pressure is going to be 1 atm or 101.325 newtons per meter squared. Take a look at this rho gh. So the density is going to be kilograms per meter cube. No can still see that. Kilograms per meter cube times gravity is going to be meters per second squared times the height going to be in meters. So canceling these guys out, look, it's going to be the same units, kilograms per meters times second squared. Okay, so hope that makes sense. As long as your units are all in newtons per meter squared, newtons per meter squared, for density use kilograms per meter cubed, the gravitational constant use meters per second squared, and height use meters. You're going to have to use some conversions if they're not already in those units, but those, in my opinion, are the easiest ways to work around using this equation. Okay, makes sense? So in the next video, we're going to try an example. Hope this makes sense. Please feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions. And uh, click over here, I guess, to get to the playlist.